Okay, guys, you are never going to believe this. I, I know Godzilla vs. Kong is coming out in a few weeks, but I managed to get myself an early copy of the movie. Or should I say I managed to find a leaked bootleg copy that someone is willing to sell me on the internet? Huh, all right, looks, looks a little beat up. I thought the title was different. Maybe that was just an early draft. Anyway, let's check this thing out. Odd choice. Feels a bit lo-fi, but maybe they were looking for something different? Okay, drop it. Oh, this... this is the original Godzilla vs. King Kong. I... yep, okay. Gotta say, I don't hate it. <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that's more fun than a barrel full of giant prehistoric ape-like cryptids. You know, it's been a tough couple of years for Legendary Pictures' big-budget Monsterverse franchise. After audiences got so annoyed at Godzilla not showing up for more than a few minutes of his own movie back in 2014, they paid him back by not showing up at all for his significantly more exciting sequel, King of the Monsters, in 2019. Boom! Get dunked on, Godzilla. The only thing that's reliably able to take you down is poor box office earnings. Fortunately for Godzilla and company, though, the studio was already well into production on the next movie at that point. But then world events shut down theaters, and now only by the grace of our corporate masters at AT&T and Warner Brothers can we finally see Godzilla vs. Kong the way any iconic summer blockbuster battle between two 400-foot monsters was meant to be watched two and a half inches high on our phones. This is a movie that's already raising a bunch of questions. Why are they fighting? When did Kong get so much bigger? Why didn't this happen years ago alongside Civil War and Batman v Superman? Side note, is this whole thing gonna get resolved by both of them knowing someone named Mothra. Mothra! Why did you say that name? But we all know what the big question is in these sorts of movies. Who is gonna win? Well, if you know the channel, you know that we're gonna do our darndest to answer this one early. And if you don't know the channel, consider subscribing for mind-blowing theories each and every week that'll make you look smart in front of all your friends. Now then, let's start answering our question by having a look at both of our competitors. According to the Monsterverse canon, this incarnation of Godzilla is 393 feet tall, or about 120 meters meters, not counting the additional 189 feet or 57.6 meters of his tail. <laughs> and he weighs in at approximately 99,634 tons, making him unquestionably the largest version of Godzilla ever depicted in live action. By contrast, Kong was only 104 feet tall, or 35 meters, when we last saw him in Kong Skull Island, which is pretty big, but only a fourth of Godzilla's size. However, it seems like he's gotten himself a lot bigger, considering that in the new movie's trailer, they stand next to each other on some aircraft carriers, and Kong is actually at Godzilla's eye level, if not even taller. Man, looking at this scene just makes me think the real winner of this battle is any boat able to float while 200,000 ton creatures duke it out on the deck. Now, knowing these rough statistics, we can use science to see which creature is gonna pack a bigger punch. Analyze what Godzilla's heat ray weapon does and doesn't destroy so we can see the temperature estimate. Look at overall differences between the mammalian brain and the reptile brain to see whose strategy is gonna win. Except, there's one major problem with all of that. If I'm using science, well, science says that both these creatures would lose because they can't possibly exist in the first place. You know those fun ruining laws of science that get in the way of, say, explosions in space, or sound in space, or literally everything to do with space? Giant monster movies tend to smack head first into all those fun ruining laws of science, mainly physics problems like the square cube law. That's the mathematical principle discovered by Galileo in 1638 that says that mass increases at a faster rate than size, basically as area squares mass cubes. And and this becomes a problem when you consider that the strength of a muscle or bone is roughly the function of its area, but weight is a function of volume. So let's say you double a monkey's height while keeping it the same shape. You wind up with four times the muscle power moving eight times the mass. That, as you might imagine, just isn't gonna work. An organism can only scale up a certain amount before all the other forces of physics and thermodynamics cause it to collapse in on itself. Neither Kong nor Godzilla would be able to grow to their respective sizes. If they existed at that size, gravity would break their bones. If their bones were somehow strong enough, gravity would pull the flesh and organs off those bones. If their entire bodies were strong enough, they'd collapse into the Earth itself, and even if you negated those issues, it is mathematically inconceivable that Kong would consume enough nutrients and water to sustain himself each and every day. So 
while I'd love to science my way into an answer for this one, the suspension of disbelief here is so extreme that you'd need, like, a, a wizard or a fairy or some level of literal magic to even approach working this out. Fortunately for us, that's exactly what we have. See, the Japanese kaiju genre, and this monsterverse in particular, has really leaned into the mishmash of Atomic Age sci-fi, gothic mad science, and straight-up folklore to justify the hand wavium it takes to get on to the stompy stompy. Sure, most of the friends and foes of Godzilla, Gamera, and the rest are supposed to be dinosaurs, mutations, or aliens from outer space, but more than a few are also identified as legendary supernatural creatures, demons, spirits, even literal gods. All the legends, the stories, In fact, Godzilla gets his name in the original 1954 movie from local legend about a sea monster. So even in his earliest appearance, he's equal parts regional folklore and atomic monster. And that mix has persisted throughout all of his incarnations. The 1990s Japanese reboot series retcon Godzilla's origin to be a normal dinosaur who protected Japanese soldiers stationed on an island in World War II. But he's also a karmic force punishing the many saved for spending their lives in pursuit of capitalist greed. Sir. You must leave your office. It's in your way. <laughs> yes, I know that. I nearly died on Lagos Island, along with my entire garrison. But the dinosaur saved us all, and all of that prosperity I built is now being destroyed by the same dinosaur at this moment, and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> it's very ironic, don't you think? Wow, that is, uh, that is deep for a movie with a guy in a rubber dinosaur suit. Then, a decade later, the movie Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attacks, definitely a mouthful, featured an even scarier magical Godzilla who was made of dead people. No, really, in that version, Godzilla's inhabited by the angry souls of everyone who was killed in the Pacific during World War II, and he's come to stomp Japan into rubble as punishment for them joining the war in the first place. Each and every time in these movies, sure, they're there is science involved. Godzilla is the atomic monster, after all. But more so, the stories are resolved via folklore. King Kong is largely the same way. In the original 1933 film, he's a god who demands sacrifices from Skull Island's indigenous people. And again, in the original King Kong vs. Godzilla from 1962... The uncomfortable King Kong, giant gorilla god of this South Seas paradise. Wait, did, did, did he just say uncomfortable? The uncomfortable King Kong. Do you mean incomparable? Uncomfortable just makes it seem like King Kong has a mild case of jock itch. Anyway, time and again we see these creatures being just as much religion and folklore as they are science and technology. And you can't have folklore without the lore bit. And yes, the Monsterverse makes sure to check that box too. Kong's god on the island. But the devils live below us. And what are they called? Skull crawlers. Why? because it sounds neat. And this is where we're gonna be able to find our answer. In battles between gods, it's not a question of science, it's a question of religion. And it's here that things really start to get weird. Osa! Uh, Alright, maybe maybe not that weird. You see, Godzilla King of Monsters reveals that the monster versus Godzilla origin is tied very strongly to what's called a singular proto-civilization theory. Basically the idea that prior to all of known history, there was an advanced human civilization with a shared language and culture that fell somehow, and whose scattered populations subsequently founded all the different human societies that come later. These are your classic legends like Atlantis and the Tower of Babel. And the theory is meant to explain how societies that never met somehow have weird similarities. Like why all the old-timey cultures were so into building pyramids. Why the same monsters exist in the mythology of all corners of the earth. And why every culture somehow inexplicably loves Minecraft. Looks Egyptian or Roman. No, this is something different. This is way older. Now, no legitimate historian really takes this theory seriously, but it's treated as real in this latest incarnation of the MonsterVerse. And one of the hallmarks of this theory is that many ancient religions have a common theme of the new gods sweeping in to overthrow the old and ugly false gods that came before, like Zeus and the Olympians defeating the Titans, or the Viking gods against the Frost Giants. In fact, even some ancient versions of the Book of Genesis describe Noah's Flood as happening to destroy half-human, half-angel giants called Nephilim, who tried to use 
usurp the Hebrew God. These proto-civilization ideas also tend to come bundled with hollow earth theories, in which the old gods or losing civilization is then forced to retreat underground. Now, in the movies, the character Dr. Sirizawa has a film theory of his own based on all of this. It's not just a cute nickname, Godzilla and all his big buddies are literally the Titans, as in the original true gods of this fallen proto-civilization. And since he is a very serious scientist with a very, very silly theory in a Godzilla movie, he turns out to be exactly right. These are not monsters. They are animals rising to reclaim a world that was once theirs. But wait, if Godzilla is a titan, and titans are the old gods who generally lose and get driven underground in all the creation myths, and Kong is also a god by his people, and he lives on the surface, and his main, possibly only job on Skull Island was beating up lizards that come up from the underground, then Godzilla vs. Kong isn't just a title fight, it's a rematch. And the movie seems to back this up. The first post credit scene in King of the Monsters implies that this fight has happened before, and the trailer for the new movie features a lot of talk about a war in the past tense. The myths are real. There was a war. Given everything that we just talked about, we know who won the battle the first time. Kong. He's the one on the surface. He's the one retrieving his former battle axe. In short, he has beaten Godzilla before. So Godzilla is coming into this thing with a loss already on the board. Does that thereby mean that Kong is the favorite to win? Well, yeah, actually. It fits with the mythology and it fits narratively given the fact that Godzilla just had a massive victory in King of the monsters. He is due for a loss. But I think our biggest proof for what's actually gonna happen in this movie comes from the original King Kong vs. Godzilla from back in 1962. You see, friends, it's easy to overlook amidst all the urban destruction, but these sorts of crossover movies are like the hype house of cinema. You get a bunch of loud monsters together for a collab so that they can all get more popular. And this was true in that first movie. Back in 1962, Kong was the much more well-known and popular monster. Godzilla had only appeared in two movies movies before that, and number two hadn't been nearly as well received as the first. In fact, King Kong vs. Godzilla only happened because a super shady Hollywood producer <clears throat> borrowed an incomplete production concept called King Kong vs. Frankenstein, and then ran off to Japan to produce a different, unapproved version using Godzilla instead of Frank. By the time the studios back in the US who actually owned Kong caught wind of this and took him back, King Kong vs. Godzilla was already a gigantic worldwide hit, and Godzilla had become a household name. The company Toho cranking out out Godzilla sequels and has never really stopped since. But in the movie, neither one actually loses. Godzilla kinda loses because he disappears and Kong is the one seen swimming off into the sunset, but neither one is officially a loser here. And you see, friends, that is where this whole thing starts coming together. You see, the real win for the studio here isn't about who wins, it's that neither monster loses. Losing implies that one fan base is right and one fan base is wrong. One set of merch is cooler than the other. One franchise continues on successfully while the other kind of dies because it lost in the last one. And the way you avoid that situation is to split the difference. You introduce a third party villain so the warring factions can team up or just render the verdict money enough that no one knows who actually won or lost. I mean, I was joking about it before, but Batman v Superman couldn't wait to tell you that Doomsday was the real big bad in that movie. And Superman doesn't die by Batman's hand, he does it to himself in a heroic sacrifice for mankind. Civil War has the twist that Zemo was manipulating them all the whole time, causing everyone to forget that the civil war between Captain America and Iron Man didn't really have a clear-cut winner. Even Twilight denied its fans a decisive Team Edward versus Team Jacob showdown in favor of them teaming up against a new challenger, the evil Vampire Legion, which ended up being all a dream anyway. Best twist ending ever, I guess. And of course, the real villain of The Ring versus The Grudge turned out to be whoever decided we needed The Ring versus The Grudge. But seriously, neither one wins out in that case either. They also join forces. This also would coincide with the lore for the movies. It's easy to overlook, but technically both monsters are heroes. Kong protects our heroes on Skull Island, Godzilla protects the world from all the awakened titans. They are both good guys here. Heck, there's even this line about Godzilla in King of the Monsters. He fought for us, died for us. He is not only proof that coexistence is possible, he is the key to it. So one losing here just doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, here's my real prediction. In the trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong, we hear this line. Godzilla's out there and he's hurting people and we don't know why. Which implies that he's been behaving himself since last time. And now something weird is happening. Well, in traditional Godzilla movie lore, if Godzilla ain't acting like himself, it's because he's not himself. That's right, we have ourselves a new challenger in the ring and his name is Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla is a giant robot duplicate of 
Godzilla that's appeared in multiple forms across multiple different eras of the franchise, almost always as either a remote-controlled or piloted fighting robot, and always as one of the real Godzilla's deadliest opponents. And while he's usually pretty hard to miss, being all hundreds of feet tall and shiny, in his first appearance in 1974's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, he spends the first half of the film wearing fake skin to disguise himself as the real thing. So could it be that in some, or even all of the scenes that we've seen in the trailer thus far, we're getting misdirected and Kong is actually fighting a giant robot wearing a Godzilla suit? Well, a lot of eagle-eyed monster fans have noticed some tiny spots in the trailer. Notice the Godzilla-shaped creature on the computer monitor, but definitely a robot back there. And this head in the building rubble, where they think they can see Godzilla's mechanical doppelganger hiding in plain sight. And while we haven't seen Giant Mecha in the MonsterVerse yet, we have seen both Monarch and Alan Jonah, the eco-terrorist baddie throughout the MonsterVerse, collecting Titan body parts as plot points. Monarch's secret base had a Muto skull built into its centerpiece, and a post credit scene in King of the Monsters featured Jonah collecting King Ghidorah's severed head. Why would that matter? Well, recently, unembargoed set reports have described that head as being a prop in the new film, but now, quote, fused with technology. And historically, both Mecha Ghidorah and Mecha Godzilla have been depicted as human piloted cyborgs built out of the bodies of deceased kaiju. This would allow us to see Kong battle a Godzilla, team up with the real Godzilla, and leave both of these monster heroes as winners to continue their franchises as victors. Now that is what I would call a twist. So there you have it, folks. Kong and Godzilla will meet, and you will see the monkey take down the lizard, but not exactly in the way you thought. And maybe, if we're right, that means you'll also see Mecha Kong too? Alright, maybe not. That one's just silly. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And remember to atomic breath that subscribe button, my friends. Like I said before, this is the channel that gives you a lot of cool stuff to talk about when it comes to movies, TV, and YouTube with all your friends. So be the first on your block to come up with these theories, find new shows or movies that might be interesting for you to watch. So across the board, it is a kaiju-sized good decision to subscribe to this channel. And by the way, if you missed my first Kong Skull Island theory where I did predict all this Hollow Earth stuff, that one is on screen right now. Totally called it. I'll see you all next week.